Are you intrigued by the innovative and venerated Cambridge Judge Business School? Interested in an immersive one-year MBA in the UK? Listen in. The Cambridge Judge Head of MBA Recruitment and Admissions is our guest today. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 407th episode of Admission Straight Talk, Accept It's Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get to our wonderful guests, I'd like to invite you to join me for our next MBA masterclass and the first masterclass exclusively for 2021-2022 applicants. I will present seven steps to MBA acceptance in 2022 tomorrow, March 3rd. Yes, that's tomorrow. During the webinar, I'm going to give you a plan that will prepare you for a successful MBA application this fall. The presentation is free, but you do need to reserve your seat and you can do so at accepted.com slash 407 masterclass. Quick announcement. I'm also going to introduce a new contest for podcast listeners at the end of the podcast. Stay tuned. It gives me great pleasure to have on Admission Straight Talk for the first time, Charlotte Russell Green, Head of MBA Recruitment and Admissions at Cambridge Judge Business School. Charlotte earned her bachelor's in drama and theater arts from the University of London. And within a couple of years, she was working in the MBA admissions world, first as a senior marketing executive for QS World MBA Tour in North America, and then an MBA admissions for Cambridge Judge MBA. She became head of recruitment and admissions for the MBA roughly five years ago. Charlotte, welcome to Admission Straight Talk. Oh, thank you. What a lovely introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's all true. Um, I'm, really, I'm so glad you can join me. All right. First to start, can you give us an overview of the Cambridge Judge MBA program for those listeners who aren't that familiar with it and uh, focus on its more distinctive elements? Sure. Uh, so the Cambridge MBA is a one year full time MBA program um, and it's run out of the University of Cambridge, which is in the UK, which is in Europe. Um, and the the great thing about the Cambridge MBA is it really is experiential. So the curriculum has been designed to take you on a micro to macro journey, but with each term, there is a key learning milestone where you, there is a practical project where you're working with a real life client. Um, there are two live consulting projects um, that run alongside your studies as well as the global consulting project, which is where you work uh, with a client, an international client um, on, on site as a consultant, as well as an internship opportunity in the summer. So it's really experiential and it's really, really collaborative. So we have a class size of circa 200, which we find is optimal for us and the learning environment that we have, because you can build meaningful relationships with your classmates. You know, it's broad enough and diverse enough to, to build a, a, a far reaching network, but you know, you're really gonna get to know everyone in the class. And you're also set amongst the University of Cambridge. So you are a member of one of the famous Cambridge colleges and you get to have the, you know, Harry Potter style dining experience. Um, it's really, it's a fantastic opportunity and a, and a great life experience. And now you mentioned that it's, for, and it's also a very short program, isn't it? Yes, it's a one, one year full-time MBA. So September to September. Right. And yet there's still time for an internship in there? Yes. Yes. So over the summer term, you can do an internship. We keep the summer term quite flexible because people can be at quite different journeys of their, their career path. So some people want to do an internship. Some people choose to do another consulting project or some even choose to do a research paper. Well, wow. okay. Now, Cambridge Judge, obviously it's a packed one-year MBA program. Do the students have any difficulty changing career direction or returning to their home country if they aren't from the UK? And I know most students are not. Yeah, exactly. So um, usually around 90% of the class is international. So it's a good question. Um, we have um, that so really good thing to look at, um, which perhaps we can link to later, is the uh, employment report, which okay. is a great way of seeing where our students go after the MBA. Because I know, particularly if you're coming from the US and you're used to the two year standard MBA model, you might feel a bit, you know, um, 
anxious about the one year programme and it being so fast paced and, um, and over in a flash. Um, but actually, we have over 90% of the class um, switch function sector or location. And actually, uh, over 40% of the class achieve all three. So get the triple wow. jump achieve all three of those yeah. so within that one year people are able to really change up their career and achieve a lot um so you know we get people who a good thing to do would be to look at the report and drill down but we get people who work in the uk and we get people who who go to work um internationally in, in another country but we do also get people who who return to their to their home country so we will definitely link to, link to that employment report from accept.com yeah. slash 407 which is our which will be the, the show note location yeah, no, that sounds that sounds great. And um, so if they want to go back to their country, their home country, that is usually doable. Yeah, so it's something that our students do achieve. But what I would say, if you are someone from the US who is looking to work in the US after your MBA, then you know, unless if it is your goal to kind of gain that international experience and get that one year internationally and broaden your network internationally, because the, the European programs do tend to be more international with Absolutely. the cohort numbers. But really, if your goal is to work in, in the US, then I would say, quite honestly, to, to stick within the location that you are in, because you're going to be able to build your network there and keep nurturing the existing network that you have. Okay, great. Great advice. Thank you. How open is the UK these days to MBA grads and staying and working for a few years in the UK? Yeah, so I'm really pleased that you asked that because um, the UK government announced last year that they would introduce the graduate route, which is where if you um, are a postgraduate student and you graduate, you can work in the UK for two years. Um, after graduating whereas previously um, it was uh, three months and then there was a pilot that extended it to six months but now it's going to be two years where people can stay and work in the UK they don't have to be sponsored by an employer um, so it's really really good because we've got so many international students um, it's, it's a fantastic uh, thing for the government to do for us. Okay great that's good to know. Now in 2018 uh, I think 16 of the Cambridge Judge grads started their own venture immediately after graduation. Mm -hmm. Given Cambridge Judge's small size, you said it was about 200, that's about 7% of the class. What does Cambridge Judge offer would-be entrepreneurs? I and mean, that's, a, that's a pretty high percentage, actually, of, of students going directly into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, well, actually, in Cambridge, we have what's called the Silicon Fen, which is Europe's equivalent of Silicon Valley. Okay. Um, and we have the highest investment per capita in Europe, five times wow. that of London. So entrepreneurship is massive here. And if you're somebody that's looking to go into entrepreneurship or starting your own venture or even going into something like venture capital, then Cambridge is a real hub for that sort of activity. Um, and the business school itself, we have um, we have an incubator called Accelerate, which our students have to apply to when they finish the MBA. Uh, but we have many people going through that route. On the MBA itself, we have entrepreneurship as a core module, as well as a concentration. The first consulting project is usually with a local startup. Um, and the university actually has, um, has an entrepreneurship society, which is the, the largest society at the university. Really? And what it does is it brings together people who potentially, you know, are academics. They have a fantastic product or, or idea or theory. Um, but they don't have the skills to market it. They don't have that business acumen. Um, and people, our students obviously have that business acumen and people often meet their business partners at these uh, networking events for the Entrepreneurship Society. So there's so there's so much to offer at Cambridge. I could go on for hours about this for entrepreneurship, uh, but I won't bore you. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, it's also, I mean, I'm in Los Angeles, okay? I mean, and I haven't, I've been, I visited the UK several times, but I haven't made it to Cambridge. So my kind of imagination, in my imagination, my image of, of Cambridge is this place steeped in tradition. Mm. And at the same time, I'm sure it is steeped in tradition. I don't think that's false, yeah. but it's also apparently very much embracing an initiative and, and new, new things and innovation. Am I correct yeah. in that? Or is it, am are, I again imagining, am I imagine, is my imagination going, carrying me away? No, no, you are 100% right. Walking around the city centre, 
you would feel like you were in a quaint English village. You know, the architecture is beautiful. We have cows and sheep <laughs> walking around the parks. You know, it's really <laughs> safe and beautiful. Great places to eat and drink, but it's, you know, it feels just so kind of quaint and beautiful and historic. But, you know, within 50 miles, you know, we've got, uh, you know, over 900 tech firms, um, you know, generating an annual revenue of 12 billion. You know. So <laughs> just it's absolutely crazy. But you wouldn't you wouldn't even you wouldn't know that walking around the city centre. Wow. I'll, I'll have to make my, my way there once we can travel again. Yeah, you'd um, be welcome. You'd be welcome. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, other than, than my imaginations, what don't people know about Cambridge Judge that you would like them to know? Let's say a common misconception. Yeah, so I think a common misconception about the University of Cambridge, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is it is academically excellent, you know, the, nice. some of the brightest minds in the world, it, you know, it's, it's a fantastic place uh, for innovation and critical thinking. But I think because of that, people can be quite intimidated by it. Um, but actually, when you come to Cambridge and you, you come to the business school, and if you are invited to interview and you have the experience of coming here, you'll see that it's, it's a professional atmosphere, but it's actually really, really relaxed. And it's very much focused around collaboration rather than competition, you know, healthy competition, but it's more about, you know, helping each other out and making each other be the best. Um, and it's, I think people are quite surprised by the, the culture at the business school because of that, that intimidation of the academic excellence that goes back, you know, hundreds of years. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, Cambridge, I think, founded in 1200 or 1300 or something like that. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. How have, getting back to today, it might be more fun talking about, I don't know, uh, <laughs> history, but anyway, how have the corona restrictions, I know UK is locked down at the moment, mm. affected the MBA experience and program at Cambridge Judge? Yeah, so I mean, I can't, I can't deny the fact that, you know, COVID has really impacted everybody. Um, absolutely everybody it's been very very unforgiving in that sense um but what it has done in a positive way for us is it has accelerated some innovation within the program so there were always plans to make some of the core modules um to be online so that students could could study the, the lectures at their own pace mm -hmm. uh, because we'd always had feedback that the first term was particularly intense because there are a lot of core modules to get through on a one year MBA program. Sure. Um, so what it's done is it's accelerated that because we didn't have any choice. We had to move some things online. Of course. Um, so that's been really positive because, and, and we've genuinely had feedback from our students that that's really positive because the lecture part is done online uh, remotely at their own pace and they can wind things back you know if they miss something they can go back and listen to it again which you can't do when you're in a lecture theatre mm -hmm. when you're learning about corporate finance if, if you're a newbie it's a fantastic way to learn to be able to do that um, mm -hmm. but then the actual in-person sessions that we had were in because we were restricted by social distancing you know had to be in groups of you know 30 20 or 30 so the conversation was really really engaging and everybody was able to contribute so we've had some really positive feedback about that and things that we can take forward into the future classes um but yeah lockdown has not been fun for anybody no um, and it's a shame but um you know we're, we're thinking positive for the next term okay and i mean our students i assume students are getting together on zoom for for group gatherings or in the uk can you get together in small groups here you can't you're not supposed to let's put it this way i assume there yeah. are people doing it but you're yeah, not supposed no. to get together in small groups no not supposed to get together in small groups um but people people are living within college accommodation within their bubbles so people aren't aren't too isolated but yeah okay. no no socializing unfortunately this term right Okay, let's get to the application. What is the purpose of the different elements in judges application? So you have four F essays, you have one reference, the interview. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that applicants sometimes look at the application and almost think that the elements are there because they're there because they're there. And yet I know that if I talk to admissions directors, there's a reason behind every single element. Can you go into that? Of course. Um... 
Well, the the reason behind one reference for us was some MBA programs ask for an academic reference as well as a supervisor reference, but the we ask for a minimum of three years work experience. And that can be quite unfair for people, especially with the class average is six. So it's challenging to, to go back and ask for an academic reference. So we ask for a supervisor reference only. Mm -hmm. The essays that we ask, and I do get asked about the essays a lot, and it's hard mm -hmm. to not give too much away because you know, we're looking at how the person responds to the questions that we're asking, you know, and it, it gives away the what potentially the way that they behave aspects of their personality um and how they respond in certain situations and whether they have resilience you know these are the kind of things that we're looking for and with the questions that we ask in particular that's what we're looking at we're looking at you know how how do they work with other people what are they like in a team how do they take instruction um are they always looking to be the leader you know those kind of things so those are the things that we look for in the essays and I know it causes so much anxiety because people people worry about how to answer it and what sort of answer to give, whether it's personal or professional. Um, but what I tend to say is give an answer that isn't too personal, but answers the question in the best possible way and shows a true reflection of, of how you respond in situations and respond to, the, to, the, to that sort of situation around that question. So it's always a difficult one to answer. Right, right. I like to tell applicants, what would you like the school to know? About exactly. You? Exactly. What are you proud of? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's uh but no, it's true. And so the the one reference you obviously want a professional reference, is that to get a different perspective on the candidate? Yeah, it's it's somebody from a supervisory role. It doesn't right. have to be so some people may think. Um, getting the CEO of their company is, is you yeah. know, a really, really great thing to do. But actually, it's it's more important that we get somebody that knows you, knows how you work, um, and can comment really honestly on 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 what you've achieved during your time working with them. Okay. And what about the interview? What is it like, and what role does it play? Yeah. So uh, the thing about the University of Cambridge is anybody that has studied here has to be interviewed by a member of faculty, um, which is a, a, you know, it's traditional, it's it's historic, and it's something that we get fed back really positively about our interview process, because it's more of a two-way conversation, the interview. Um, it gives you the opportunity to, to work out what, you know, get a feel for the culture, um, get your questions answered, as well as, you know, the, the faculty being able to find out about you as well. Um, but it's really, it, it, it does play an important part because the interviewer recommendation obviously is what is comes to what is, um, it makes, an, makes a difference to the decision that's going to be made. Um, but it's not as, I say prepare for it as you would a job interview, but also be prepared, you know, for, for a two way conversation just a kind of professional conversation. And I think people are quite surprised by that. Well, having faculty interview is very unusual in the business school world. It's almost always either alumni or admissions professionals. Yeah, it's, I think it's, in, it, it's indicative of what the culture is here. So it's a very, very collaborative culture. Um, one of the things that I like to tell people is every day at 11 o'clock pre-COVID, everyone from the business school would come together in the common room and have coffee 11 o'clock every day staff mm -hmm. faculty students everyone has coffee um so it really gives you a feel for just how collaborative it is how connected it really is you know you can speak to the faculty you know they are approachable they take a genuine interest in the students that we have here um and you know that kind of relationship is built from the interview process onwards okay great and it's, I assume this year at least, it's virtual and it's about, you know, a half hour conversation. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes, 20 okay, minutes. Great. What do you think is the most common mistake that applicants make in their applications to Cambridge Judge? So I would say, This is a challenging one because it's difficult to put your finger on why an essay 
isn't right. Okay. But I would say people maybe give an answer that they think is going to be impressive as opposed to an answer that genuinely answers the question. That's a common mistake that we find. Um, because, you know, it doesn't, we're not necessarily looking for the most impressive answer. We're looking for the most honest answer that shows, you know, critical reflection on the situation and shows how they've responded and, and how they've thought about it since and what they've learned from it. That's kind of what we're looking for in the essays. Um, and I think people, because of the pressure of the application, understandably, want to impress us and give us give us answers that maybe show them in the best light as opposed to answering the question. And then you've got the general housekeeping errors where people mention another business school in one of their essays, or you know, the CV, the resume that they've uploaded has another business school's name on the file. You know, right, right. simple things like that 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 uh, you know we know you're applying to another school but you know take your time and check those sort of um check those sort of things before you click submit right okay <laughs> great great response thank you now in in light of the pandemic and the crazy end to last year's admission cycle are you going to read applications with a slightly different perspective looking for or weighing somewhat different qualities and attributes than you did in preceding application cycles I mean, we've all, we have always looked for skill, you know, skills like, uh, and personality traits like resilience. That's always been really important. Uh, Self-awareness, uh, critical reflection. And I think that this pandemic has really tested people's resilience this year. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. I, think, I think if anything, it's really gonna benefit the applicant because if, we've, if you've been able to get through this year, you've got a lot to be able to offer in your, in your application with regards to, to resilience and self-awareness. Um, but I mean, with regards to, to reviewing them differently, um, it's a difficult one. I think it will, it will probably be similar to the way to the way that we are, but in if people's job circumstances changed as a result of the pandemic, you know, redundancies or anything like that, then obviously we're going to take take that into consideration um, for career breaks and things like that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have any plans to go test optional? I mean, that's something that's happening right and left in the United States. Yeah, we've seen that it's happened. It's not something that we're going to do um <clears throat> simply because it's it's an opportunity for students who have not done so well in their undergraduate academics mm -hmm. to compensate um and therefore if we were to make it optional it would potentially take away the level playing field for everybody so yeah it's it's not something that we would be doing we would always require a gmat or a gre um do you have any and preference between thing. them? Do you oh. have any preference between them? Uh, no, we accept both. We accept both GMAT and GRE, no preference. Um, but it's, we, you know, we've, we're quite stringent on the minimum of a 2-1 requirement um, on the UK scale, which I think works out of a 3.5 GPA on the US okay. scale. Okay. So the GMAT or the GRE offers people an opportunity to, to compensate. So it's actually quite a positive thing for our applicants. So if somebody has below a, a 3.5 on the US scale, they still might have a chance that they do really, really well on the GMAT or the GRE. Exactly. Got it. Okay. All right. That's good to know. No, I've, I've been advising applicants that if they have a, a, you know, a great GPA and they have other evidence of academic ability they, and they don't want to take the test, then they don't have to. But if they have a GPA that they're not exactly thrilled with, then the test can be their opportunity to show academic ability. Exactly. So, okay. What would you say to applicants who want to apply this year, but are concerned either about competing in the midst of an application surge, which certainly is occurring here. I'm going to guess that, that you folks are also experiencing it or, and, and also you might've had some, a higher number of deferrals from last year because of, of COVID. Um, or they're concerned about graduating into a weak economy. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those applicants? Yeah, it's an understandable concern on, on, on all of those things that you talked about. 
Um, with regards to the application surge, we have seen a surge in applications, but if you are, you know, with, with application surges, you know, not everyone is a top candidate. <laughs> so if you are, if you're, if you're a strong person and you're coming, you're coming with a good application, a good profile, then, you know, I would encourage you to apply because, you know, we would, we would want you on the program. You would most likely be invited to interview and made an offer. Um, I mean, it's, it's difficult when you're, it, you know, the numbers do get less and less um, as you go throughout the year. So we're going into, we're just about to interview for round three. Um, but unlike the US programs, we don't just fill up from rounds one and two. You know, we take people from all five application rounds. Okay. Um, and I think the last application round is towards the end of April. Um, so it's a valid concern, but I would say if you're the right person for the programme, you know, and you've looked at the programme and you're genuinely interested in it and it's the right programme for you, then I would encourage you to apply and get in touch with us because, you know, we, we make space for the people that we want here. Okay. Um, with regards to the weak economy, again, it's a really valid concern and an MBA programme, it is, it is a big investment, you know, you you're investing a lot in yourself and the ROI is incredibly important. The job you get afterwards is incredibly important. You know, you're paying off loans. Um, so, you know, it's, it's understandable, but there is a lot of opportunity in, in a weak economy. You know, there are industries that are falling, but there are industries that are surging and doing incredibly well. You know, the tech industry, the e-commerce industry, there is so much opportunity for innovation at the moment. Um, so although, you know, it's, there are potential risks with, with doing an MBA right now, there are also real opportunities for it. Um, and, you know, who knows where, where we'll be this time next year, you know, this time in 18, you know, in 18, you know, in 18 months time. Um, so it's, it's that valuable and understandable concerns, but again, lots of, lots of room for opportunity. Great. Okay. I recently was listening to a podcast and the, the speaker on the podcast was saying that entrepreneurs by their very nature are problem solvers. Mm. They, they view problems as opportunities, business opportunities, because if you solve a problem, either with a product or a service, that's a market need. Yeah. So are there more, are there more or fewer problems than there were a year and a half ago? Well, definitely to me, they seem like there are a lot more exactly exactly so yeah. anyway i thought it was a, a very interesting way to to look at it from a business perspective and that it doesn't t doesn't take away from that i'm not demeaning in any way shape or form the people who are struggling now yeah yeah you know but it is true yeah definitely but, um and um the kind of people looking to do an mba are people that are probably gonna you know they're not going to be too risk averse, you know, they're also going to be the kind of people that problem solvers, people that are looking to, to take on opportunities. And I mean, even that like the UK banking sector has really innovated very quickly because they've had to, you know, there, there are things, you know, the online chat services, you can close accounts now online, which you couldn't do so many things that, you know, you had to do bureaucratically, you know, you'd have to go in branch yeah. or fill out paperwork and you don't have to do that anymore. It's brilliant. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now you mentioned that Cambridge's last deadline for the September, 2021 matriculants is April 26th. There's also one on March 8th. What advice would you give to someone in the midst of preparing an application for this cycle? Okay. So time's coming up it's yeah. short. What advice would you have for them? Yeah. So, um, I would say, um, I imagine that people looking to apply now have already taken their GMAT or GRE unless they're cutting it really fine. So I would I certainly that... hope so. I actually had one applicant, I'll never forget this, call us that he wanted our assistance with his application and he was taking, and it was like three days before the deadline and he was taking oh. the GMAT the day before the deadline. Oh, why would you put that pressure on yourself? <laughs> oh, I man. sure wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I sure yeah. wouldn't. They do it and they do it fine. But I mean, it's just that, that kind of pressure and that sort of yeah. time. It's just, I mean, it brings me out in a sweat just thinking about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully they've got those things out of the way. I would say take your time over the essays. 
you know, if you're re if you're in, if you're applying to the program, there's obviously something about it that's interested you. So think about why we're asking the questions that we're asking, and and answer in an honest way. Take your time over them. Potentially get somebody that you trust um, who's going to be objective and read it over, um, and 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 get feedback and and really you know put together a really really solid answer for your essays, especially your careers essay as well. Um, but also you know if you haven't already, get in touch with us. You know, if you're looking to apply in, in the next two rounds, get in touch with us, attend one of our events, um, talk to us, because that's always great if we can get to know people before they apply. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, great. Great advice. Thank you. What advice would you give to someone thinking ahead to a fall 2021 or later application? In other words, matriculation in 2022 or later? Yeah. Oh, well, Good for you. You're really prepared by listening to this podcast. <laughs> You're doing all the right things. Um, listening to things like this, doing your research, attending events. Um, you know, we've got lots of events coming up over the next year or so. Everything's virtual now. So a real positive thing is that you don't have to be located in the UK or in one of the countries that we visit or cities that we visit to attend. You can attend any time. Um, yeah, get in touch with us. Um, prepare for the GMAT or the GRE. And if you're not sure about your score, like feel free to email us as well. Like we're happy to give feedback on, on, you know, if you're not sure about whether the score is competitive with the rest of your profile, then we're happy to give feedback on that. Um, but you know, you've got plenty of time. So um, good luck with, with GMAT and GRE prep and uh, yeah, connect with us and, and find out more about us. And okay. we'd love to find out more about you. Sounds good. Is there anything you would have liked me to ask you? Oh, well, it's Friday night here, so a glass of wine would have been amazing. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, <laughs> a virtual glass of wine, how's that? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> um, I think um, you've asked some really good questions, um, but I think a question about the, the college experience would have been brilliant. Um, it's, it's quite unique to the UK. Um, it's quite unique even within the UK. Um, there are only two universities in the UK that have this collegiate system. And what happens when you come on the Cambridge MBA is you don't just have the network within the MBA programme and the business school. You don't just have your MBA, but you are a member of one of the, the famous Cambridge colleges. So uh, that's where you live, that's where you dine, um, that's where you socialise. Each college has its own bar. Um, you can join the rowing team, you know, Cambridge is massive on rowing, mm -hmm. um, any sort of sport, sporting team. We have uh, people playing for varsity rugby at Twickenham. Um, we have people joining the debate team or the cheese and wine society, you know, any extracurricular activity that you wanted to do, you can do at one of the Cambridge colleges. Um, and it's, it's not just it, it kind of gives that kind of extra life experience when you join yeah. Cambridge MBA because you have the professional experience of the MBA, the network and the societies and the extracurriculars within the MBA, but then you have this little life within, within the Cambridge oh, University. Right. You know, you're a student at the University of Cambridge and you're living that, you know, the dining rooms, when I say Harry Potter, they are, they're just like Harry Potter. That's what Harry Potter was based on, you know, the, the yeah. famous Cambridge dining rooms. So it's, it's a really magical historical experience that, that you get to be a part of. That sounds fascinating. I really have to go and visit again once travel is allowed. Yeah. All right. Well, Charlotte, I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's tonight, your time. It's morning here. And it's about time for you to go get that glass of wine. Where yep. can listeners, however, before you go, where can listeners and potential applicants learn more about Cambridge Judges' full-time MBA program? Yeah, so uh, the website is JBS, so as in Judge Business School, dot cam, dot ac dot uk forward slash programs forward slash MBA. Okay, great. Uh, we'll include links in the show notes at accept.com slash 407 to the Gamper Judge site, which Charlotte just mentioned, as well as to related articles and interviews. They're all going to be linked to from accepted.com slash 407. Quick reminder, register for Seven Steps to MBA Acceptance in 2022, a free masterclass that I will present on Wednesday, March 4th. That's tomorrow. Although complimentary, you do need to save your seat. You can do so at accepted.com slash 407 masterclass.
Listener, thank you too for joining Charlotte Russell Green, Head of MBA Recruitment and Admissions at Cambridge Judge Business School and me for our 407th episode. Here's the announcement I promised at the beginning of the show. It's the thank you for your review contest. One listener a month who leaves a podcast review on Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, will win a free 20-minute consultation with me. You can leave your review at lovethepodcast.com slash AST. I look forward to hearing from you and speaking with you. Thanks again for coming. This is Admission Straight Talk produced by Accepted, and I'm your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week.